Welcome to ICT Integration Workshop 5. This week we're going to look at online communication. I hope you enjoyed your holidays. Let's get started. So we're going to be covering uh, basic communication practice, the teaching triangle, how to communicate in cyber safety, and then I'll be going over get busy, second life, and how to do a mail merge. Now, the teaching triangle was basically a student can learn on their own. However, without the support of the teachers, or the, the teachers helping them, they're, they're gonna have difficulties learning, and without the students working, the teachers are gonna have trouble teaching. You can lead a student to their work, but you can't force them to write. Parent support is the third wedge of the triangle, and without the students trying to learn, the teachers trying to teach, and the parents being supportive, you're not gonna get the best out of the student. So you actually need all three on board, and so it's important to maintain good communication. One of the most important things you can do in your teaching practice is contact your parents within the first two weeks of school. So straight away, get on the front foot, send an email to your parents and your all the students in the classroom, or give them a phone call to, to make that first, first line of contact. Because if you actually ring up and say, hi, I'm Jared Johnson, I'm your teacher for, or your student's teacher for science. Um, so far we've covered this, uh, it seems to be settling in well. You can keep it to a couple of minute phone call, but it's just a touch base. That means that every phone call after that, you, when the parent answers the phone, they recognize who you are, and you, you can go, look, little Johnny's not doing work in class, or little Johnny's not doing his homework, or little Johnny's doing really well on his science assignments. So you've broken down that communication. Also keep a record of your communication. So when you speak to a parent, write, write the brief notes down so you can keep it together. And if a parent says, look, we, would, we discussed we're gonna do that, you say, hang on, no we didn't, or yes, you're right, and I need to follow this up. Uh, next thing is setting up class emails. Um, just gonna switch, and I'll get over to these other things as well. I'm just gonna switch to our email. So, the uni email has gone from webmail now to Outlook, so they'll look slightly different either way. What you can do is set up an address book and put all your students' emails, or especially all your parent emails, together into the address book. Um, this means you can send one group email, makes it easy, and um, rather than have to type it out each time. The other thing is, when you send emails to parents, put it. don't put it in the to field. You can put your own email there, jared.johnson, whatever. Um, put it in the BCC. So BCC means blind carbon copy. And you're going to send your emails to say your, your three parents in your class, if, if you've got that few. Uh, but each parent will get an email individually and it won't have any of the other parents listed there. So this means that you, you maintain the privacy of each parent. Um, it also means that each parent thinks you've sent them an email personally. If you put them all together in the CC field or two field, then they go, well, you're just sending out a group email. So this is a nice, well, sneaky way of, of trying to be a bit more um, polite, a bit more one-to-one. Um, -one. Now in Op Outlook, you notice there is no BCC field. So you have to go to options and show BCC. And you can also, while you're there, go click on the read request, uh, um, request a read receipt. So it means when the person or the send the receiver reads it, you get a message to say, yes, they've read it. All right, so now I can actually put it in here. Now, the other thing you can do uh, while I'm on this on this topic is uh, look at sent items. So in your inbox, all right, you, I, I've got, I can, if a student says, oh, no, I sent that to you with my assignment, I can go and check. So I can go to my sent items and say, oh yeah, you've sent a message to Jared Johnson. Now, the student might've written Jared Johnston so it doesn't actually get to me. However, in this sent item, it still has it. And I can say, oh yeah, I can see you've sent it and it was sent at this day, at this time, and your attachment is here. Now, if I click on that attachment, let's have a quick look, little Johnny. Uh, what have you sent me? Open it up. Well, that's not a very good assignment. It's three letters. So little Johnny realizes he's, he's done and he's busted. So a little tip for you on uh, making sure that of how to check on the students now yeah. right so you can check your sent items so we've covered um, um, uh, emailing learning platform we've done uh, in uh, the first one uh, and it's important that through the learn anywhere anytime model that you'll have some form of communication with the students that they can get anytime 
Now this is get busy. Uh, I've just taken a couple of screenshots um, for the from the program. Um, it's only four tabs. Very simple program, but very effective. So um, and you can see it runs on an iPad. So the first one, first tab is the diary, and a teacher can run to it saying as an email. A teacher can write a note and go right click, you know, eleven homework. Maths homework is exercise four point one questions one to ten, and add a student or a group of students or a class, and the students are monitored to see if they've read it. So if this, when they've actually read it, then it will come up and say, yep, you've read it, no problems. If they haven't read it, you can say, hang on a second, you're not reading your notes. Um, how are you expecting to know what the homework is? So it, it, it's a good way of tracking the students. The second one is the timetable. So this is pulling the details in from Synergetic um, um, or whatever timetable program they use, and it brings up the student's timetable. So this is replacing the diary. Um, and the good thing is a student can write down, oh, in science today, oh, today we've got maths uh, and we've done this and their homework is, is so on. Um, the next, this field, the today field, so you can see here we're talking about maths. So the student can see their stuff from today and also get their morning notices or bulletin. Um, and this is derived straight from the school uh, blog or whatever. Uh, and the final tab is the info. So these are static web pages that the school has set up, such as uh, um, homework policies, uniform policies. Uh, the it's all the information the student could possibly need. So it, the whole package basically can, um, replaces the diary. So, so a good pro a book, good program. Um, but we'll see how we go now. Cyber safety in South in Australia, one of the best places to go for to look up cyber safety is CyberSmart. Uh, it's a website. Um, run by the government and it's got lots and lots of information. I've got the link down here to CyberSmart. Um, and we discuss this here about digital, digital citizenship is about building safe spaces um, and using your online presence to grow and shape your world. Now, students nowadays spend about half their time online to the point that they see the virtual world and the real world as both just as important as one another. Now, Speaking, I'm talking about Facebook. The document came out recently, I think it was last year, about May 16th, to suggest that all teachers, uh, and this was a document produced by um, independent government and Catholic Ed, and it's a, it, they strongly suggested that teachers do not have students as friends on their private Facebook page. Um, now, this means that a um, if, if, a st if a student's on your page, um, you could get in trouble from the school, depends on how they go. But the other thing you have to worry about is what is your duty of care? So you, all, you, you will all have to do or have done a mandatory tra um, notification training. So if you see a student at risk or a student who's um, struggling with stuff, you must report it. Now, if you've got a student who's on your Facebook page, and they, and they write on their Facebook, oh, I got really drunk the other night. Do you have to report that? Or a student might say, I'm feeling really sad. I think I'm going to kill myself. Do you have to report that? And if it turns out a student does kill themselves and you are one of their friends and they've written on and they've posted it, what's going to happen? You know, if they do an investigation and find out, hang on, you were online, you could have potentially read that and done something about it. You know, so basically keep yourself safe. Um... It's a scary world we live in. It's uh, um, there's some people using Facebook very very well with students, and they're using this in in a different way where they're actually using a Facebook page, not their Facebook profile. So they set up a class. All the students can log in. You don't actually see what the students are doing, but you see what they're doing on that page. So it's a bit like Edmodo. Um, yeah, this is a, a document from uh, produced by Dex talking about cyber safety. So if something happens, whether it's in or out of school hours um, and it's reported then you actually need to go through and discuss what is um, and go through these steps to find out what you need to do um, and who you need to contact. Next thing is Second Life. So Second Life is an online virtual world uh, and basically takes the classroom online. I've got some photos here. This is an example of a um, Second Life. So this is my avatar here and I can walk around this world. Uh, I've just taken screenshots because it's so so my computer doesn't run too slow. But this is an example of a Mayan uh, world that someone's built. So you can see here, this is the ball 
um, game that they play in my things. These are um, uh, basically a screen that has YouTube videos that run on it. Uh, and you can pick up these balls and throw them through the hoop and so on. And this is a, uh, I always forget, an orrery, which is the, the sky, sky labs of the Mayan calendar and explaining how it all works. Now, it's very easy to uh, imagine that students, students struggle with some of the concepts to do with uh, the Mayan calendars and sky and everything. But if the student can log on and actually interact with the stuff, um, it's a really great tool. So that's Second Life. Now, lastly, we're look at, going to look at a mail merge. So a mail merge is a really powerful tool. Um, uh, you may have used it or may have seen it. Um, basically, it integrates an Excel spreadsheet and Word. And the best thing I can su suggest is use a mail merge, merge wizard. So uh, I've got a couple of students here. Here are their marks, which I've been, I've been keeping. They haven't done the exam. And I might have here, come on, they work for the semester. So I just want to average this. So equals average, I click on average. And I just want to average these things here. And then I want to grab the bottom corner and fill down. So now it's taking average of their marks. And if I put in their exams as well, so um, Jared Johnson didn't do very well in his exam, he got 72%. You can see that it's automatically calculating. So now I can actually go and tell each of those students what they got, or I'm just going to save that. What I can do is I can open up a Word document, go to, now this is using a, a the Mac version of Word, but it's going to be pretty much the same, and I want it to be a form letter, get the list, open data, and I navigate to where I've where I've been keeping my document, my um, my data. Open up the sheet that's in, and you can see here it's come up with the different things. So I'll say uh, hi, and you might remember first name, last name, All right? And that's actually taken from all the headings across the top. Uh, your marks for the year, for the semester. Uh, let's just put in a task result. So first task was uh, the discussion. And I'm just tabbing across now, then an essay, then a practical, then their exam and final result. All I do is I just go discussion, essay, practical, exam, semester. Now, it looks messy. If I actually look down here at ABC, the ABC, it actually shows me my results. So there's, hi, Jared Johnson. Let's go to the next person, Steve Dutko, and here's his results. So in fact, you know what? Let's make this bold. Okay. And guess what? It's bold from them all. Okay. So there's our four people. I've done particularly badly. Um, and then what I can do is I can actually merge this to the printer or merge it to a new document or merge it to an email. So because I actually had the email set up uh, as one of the fields, it would actually email and send that document straight to the student. Great way of actually submitting all their results and giving them, and giving them feedback. You want really good feedback for the students. The quicker the feedback, the better the students generally do. Our discussion board this week. Uh, I've got here, you may have students on your Facebook or communication media. Do you have a digital duty of care for the students that are on your Facebook? So that'll be first task. Second one is get busy. Can, so I'm just looking at get busy, can potentially convert schools to electronic diaries. And what do you see as the benefits and limitations of this type of product? So whether it's get busy or electronic diaries or whatever, is this good, is this bad? What are the problems, what are the benefits? Um, and with more and more time spent online, should learning in your classroom area be limited to the walls of the classroom? We, you've got learning platforms, you've got Second Life, you've got many, many different things. Um, does your learning happen in the room or should it be everywhere? All right, so, and finally, uh, the stuff that we've covered this week was uh, 
uh, in national professional standards stat and four which is create and maintain a safe learning environment assess and provide feedback for students learning and engage professionally with colleagues parents carers